our center is a very small, freestanding uh, center that works in relationship to the library and also in relationship to campus IT in general. So we can draw upon both of these entities and that makes us um, very thankful for our sort of independence and agility. And I guess different centers are set up in different ways. Uh, part of what I was asked to talk about are some of the reasons why the structure, the infrastructure we have, seems to work well for our digital centers. I think we've been very fortunate in having a vice provost who is head of information technology, who is also an organizational psychologist, and he helped us work out this structure uh, so that we can have a sense that we're not always chasing after the soft money or ask, indeed asking for volunteers. And I know it's a difficult time given the general retrenchment and um, hard times for a lot of public universities, especially public uh, operations, to sustain projects, but I will just again say we're thankful for this independent funding that we have. It enables us to do a lot of things. When we were first created, our, our mission was to move digital scholarship from the periphery of the university to the center of the, of the university, and I think we've done that. I would show you a video uh, about the center, but I think after David's talk, it would be like a Disney World uh, experience. I, I won't show you that video. I think the video is still used to recruit a lot of professors and uh, students who are still somewhat weary of this thing called digitality, and particularly in some established fields, history, literature, we've had some good luck with attracting faculty in other areas, not so much, but I think part of our mission was to suggest to a number of people in the humanities that yes, this thing called digital scholarship is with us, it's likely to stay for a while, we can help you make it work for you, and we can also teach you how to use the tools so that it's not just to come in and drop off your materials and take them back with the site that we made for you, but it's also a, an effort to teach you how to use the tools themselves. So we did have a team of people, and maybe I should show you that. We are um, in the library, but we're really not off the library. And I've shown you these people in the way I think Liz was showing the folks that work with her to get at what the infrastructure really is like. We have about, uh, I would say at this point, 14 full-time staff people. So that's a substantial commitment the university has made to a digital center. And we also have about 30 or 35 graduate students who work anywhere from uh, eight hours a week to 20 hours a week, depending upon their roles and their um, interest and their time. I'm just kind of page through this. Some of them that it would show you their guitars and their faces. Uh, so you can kind of get a sense that it's a pretty good group of people. And we do a lot of uh, projects. If you want to see more about the center, you can check our site. And we have, I don't know, maybe we've done 100 or 150 projects, and we have a lot of projects going on at one time. Part of the idea of our creation is also this notion of public scholarship in the sense that the sites we make <coughs> tend to be sites that people who are scholars want to have more accessible to a general audience. So we believe in open access open source materials where possible. We collaborate with faculty and graduate students, with other institutions. We have a, a wonderful collaboration going on with UNC Press and, and John's a team to uh, do some projects in digital scholarly editions under a platform that we're making called Redux. Um, and we also are reaching out to other kinds of organizations to build these collaborations in the way that David suggested through these notions of consortia, so you get several institutions together contributing to projects. I think the other way to think about sustainability, besides the example David's offering up, which we hope will work with the consortium idea, 
is that particularly universities or institutions commit themselves based upon the strengths of their collecting materials in the libraries, between, uh, upon the strength of their faculty and research areas, graduate student strengths, so that you pick a project or two and commit to that project. It's not that every university can take on 10 or 12 projects, but we have several that we've made these long-term commitments to. The, the Atlantic Slave, Slave Trade Database is one. The Southern Spaces Journal is another, which now has, uh, which Catherine and Martin and I founded now 15 years ago um, and as an experiment in doing digital journal publication, but we can also publish in extremely long form uh, formats as well on, on Southern Spaces. But the idea is to try to get faculty to work with grad students, you train the grad students, and on the Southern Spaces side, uh, we actually have a program set up so that graduate students are functioning as editors of the journal. And they come in and they learn how to work with authors, and they learn how to do layout, and they work on platform design and redesign as we migrate, as, you, as we have to do every five or six years to the next platform or the next stage, but the grad students are learning how to do this work, and it gives them skills in which they can then go out and add that to their dissertation, and we've had really good luck. I would almost say 100% success in helping our grad students who've worked at the center to get uh, jobs in fields where their digital skills are now quite useful and quite um, in demand. I'll just put it up here on the Southern Spaces site for a minute and talk about some of the other features. When you go to create a new publishing project in digital scholarship, I think one of the things you look around to see is there a particular niche that might be filled or a particular kind of change that has happened in the scholarship that requires a new platform. And with projects that we've launched into um, journal formats, we've done one called the Journal of Rehabilitation in Humanities, which is really not about rehabilitating the humanities, but it's about the use of uh, humanities, poetry, dance, music in the, in the actual medical practice of rehabilitation. So that, there was not a journal that existed there, so we have people in the to who create that uh, particular journal. Also, in, uh, Deborah Lipstadt, who was on trial in the Holocaust trial, uh, Holocaust denial, a few years ago, she had accumulated an enormous body of material related to the history of Holocaust and Holocaust denial. And there was no such site that existed, so we put up that site for her, and graduate students, again, learned how to, how to do these projects. And similarly, with um, the Southern Spaces site, there really wasn't a, a place that was doing a sort of critique to say, oh, uh, this notion of the South really isn't a region, we've got to talk about regions within an existing imagined space of the South, and there really wasn't a place doing that, plus we wanted to have some experiments with multimedia, video, audio, images, maps, all of those things. That, so if you look at the Southern Spaces articles, this kind of represents, in some sense, our take on how to do digital journal projects. It's peer-reviewed, it also has blog posts and book reviews, and we could go into any of these and hope you will. Uh, documentaries, we can do full-length documentary pieces that folks have put together. And it's sustained, again, by staff of students, although we do have some faculty um, advising and working on it. The other thing, I think, to think about, too, is the way in which um, tools and platforms, how many of these can you create or make? And we have decided not to take on that so much. Uh, there are other places that do a lot of that work. We do have a commitment, uh, as we're working with uh, John and UNC Press, on this uh, scholarly platform called Redux, which is a way to take primary materials, um, create facsimile versions of them, have them OCR, and then create a scholarly digital apparatus to annotate those and then publish them online. So you end up with an online scholarly edition. You can also have a hard version to go with that. And this is a project, again, we looked around and nobody else was doing this. So we're into that pretty far away and there will be several volumes published in this series um, called Sounding Spirit, which will be a history 
and critical edition of American religious music as it came out of the U.S. South, white and African American and Native American traditions. And those will be published with UNC Press and as a, as a Redux online platform as well. The other ways we help to try to document perhaps and keep things organized, we use this workflow uh, system called Trello. I don't know if, if people know Trello, but it's free and it allows us to organize how things proceed through a project. And it's been very helpful for, for the whole Emory Center for Digital Scholarship, in which we, all of our various hundred projects are organized. We meet every other week and look at the Trello board and see where things are progressing and where things are not. But it's also useful for individual projects within the ECDS, uh, such as Southern Spaces, that you have a sense of how articles proceed through the workflow from first contacting authors to finally publishing or not publishing, rejecting pieces. And that leaves a trail of documentation. Again, it teaches students how to create documents so other people, if they're not going to be around for a couple of years, how can people who come in after them uh, go along and see what was done in terms of the documentation. And this would also work in everything, for instance, that we have on the Southern Spaces site. There's documentation on how do you do a video if you're going to go out in the field and, re and record a documentary or an interview. Uh, the steps for that are documented and kept in these platforms. We use other kind of platforms that I guess are pretty common in, in the digital world, like a Slack channel and the Pivotal Tracker uh, track, uh, platform, which has this very, uh, when I first encountered it, curious and unique notion of what a story is. If you've ever worked with Pivotal Tracker, their stories are not like our stories. But uh, in, the, in the creating of Sustainability, we, all, we rely on a number of things. While we're waiting for the ever-promised uh, Emory repository, uh, digital repository, everybody has a promised digital repository. Uh, we're, we're, you know, there's always the external hard drives, but you know, David, the Davis Project is also archived on Dataverse, and we have stuff on the Amazon web, you know, the glaciers, glacial space that where things just go and hopefully if you want to get them back sometime, they'll still be there. There are various cloud services and Emory servers that we also use. Um, and I think what we've tried to do is while we're waiting for the developments to take place uh, in sustainability and permanence and um, even repositories, we still have to do the work of the of digital scholarship and I think our notion is broad enough to include collaborations across not just the humanities, but also projects with the medical school. Uh, there's a really interesting new technology, a kind of 360 video capture that allows people to do uh, work, for instance, in an Ebola training room so that people who are in the medical school can learn how to treat Ebola patients uh, through immersion in a 360 video experience, which gives them a sense of what an actual experience is like uh, without actually having to be in that situation. And so those are ways in which the technology itself is kind of leading the way and, and we can't really wait for, them, for things to all be preserved and saved and indeed many things I think probably shouldn't be preserved or saved. That's probably another lesson of what we're coming to. Uh, certainly traffic is important on various websites. And I think that's a measure. It's also important to have your articles, if you have pieces on Southern Spaces, they go back to 2004. You need to be able to go back and look at those pieces and they need to be brought up to date and the links still need to work. So th those are all jobs and tasks that uh, we try to train folks to do. We do a lot of work with digital mapping, uh, with uh, text mining, but again, you can only take on so many projects and I guess that would be one of my sort of conclude, concluding uh, remarks to try to identify the situation you're in at whatever institution you're at. Look at the strengths of the teaching, the strengths of the collections, and the strengths of the student and their interest in order to decide which of these kinds of projects to take up and let someone else who has strengths in other areas take them up at their institutions. I think uh, I've always uh, enjoyed David's quote, I think it's worth repeating here, the one he offered us er earlier this morning. Uh, 
in the digital world and digital scholarship, a laurel rested upon is a laurel withered. And I think that's been our motto, I think, now at the Digital Center for a while. Uh, be happy to take questions and talk afterwards. We help, uh, also put out some flyers about the uh, Southern Spaces Journal if you're interested in that. Thanks.